Well, good morning and welcome to worship here on the sixth Sunday, or oh, fifth Sunday, I think it's the sixth Sunday actually, and welcome to worship. We do not have bulletins today, but we're going to be okay, I promise, I promise we're going to be okay. So everything's going to be up here on the screen, and I'm going to read the announcements to you. So today we have worship. Next week we have confirmation. So Isaac Johnson and Ashton Terhar will be confirmed. Um, so we're looking forward to next week for the confirmation rites. And there will be communion next week as well. Uh, a couple graduation announcements. So we got Emmett's we got today. Um, his is going to be Sunday, June 11th from 1 to 4 at Kurt and Yvette Kirkhoff's home. And then we have Ethan's. Uh, is going to be at his home on June 3rd from 1 to 4. Everyone is welcome. And then I believe that Annika's is in here as well, Sunday, May 28th um, from 1 to 4 at her home. So we have three different weekends where we're going to have stuff to go to. Exciting. Um, let's see, what else? There are cards in the back uh, to sign if you would like to leave a note for Isaac um, or Ashton to... Uh, Congratulate them on being confirmed and maybe give them some wisdom. Uh, we would love if you would do that. Vacation Bible School has been scheduled. It's going to be August 6th through the 9th. So it's going to be a Sunday evening through a Wednesday evening. It'll be 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, with dinner at 5.30. Let's see. What else? We're still looking for delegates, I believe, for Big Growth. Was that correct? Yes. So if you're interested in going to the Synod Assembly, June 9th and 10th at Gus Davis, um, please let us know. We would love to have somebody represent Big Grove at this year's Synod Assembly. I think that is all the announcements I will highlight for today. Uh, is there anything I should add? Alicia. Oh, Ashton's having a party. You're right. There will be an open house lunch in celebration of Ashton Terhar's confirmation on May 21st from 12.30 to 2 at his home and all are welcome. So next Sunday from 12.30 to 2, let's join Ashton and celebrate him. All right. And Kurt. Yes. So Kurt and Yvette, 2 to 5 this coming Saturday. Congratulations to you guys. All right. Let's stand as you were able as we begin worship this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, number 857.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are going to sing a new song this morning called 10,000 Reasons. You probably, if you listen to the radio, this would be one that you might recognize. And so we'll give it a shot today. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The first scripture reading today comes from Acts 17, 22 to 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at all the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is go like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all the people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will get have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Word of God, word of life. The responsive psalm reading comes from Psalm 66, 8 to 20. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. Come and listen, all who you believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love for me. The second scripture reading comes from 1 Peter 3, 13-22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good, but even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands you from an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous of, for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently for the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, in baptism, which is through the resurrection of now saves you not of a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is not at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made to subject him. Word of God, word of life. We are supposed to sing today for jam songs. How many kids do we have here today? Just one? Addy, don't jump up. We got Aiken, too. We got Curtis back there. You guys want to give it a shot? I'll sing with you. All right. All right. 
So Jam just concluded. That's our Wednesday ministry from 3.45 to 5 on Wednesdays. And we just had our last worship on, um, our last time on Wednesday, right? And we have studied Joseph and his brothers this year. We've studied Jesus as the good shepherd. We've studied the four friends that lowered their friend down uh, through the ceiling to be healed by Jesus. And we've also studied Holy Week this year. And we learned how much God loves us and that no matter what we do or say, God will always be there with us. And so we're going to sing, our first song today is Fill My Cup. And we're just going to sing the first verse. And I'll help you guys out. Here we go. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Oh yeah. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Oh yeah. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. All right. And next we have Jesus Loves Me. And then our last one is This Little Light of Mine. So we're going to sing This Little Light of Mine, then it's going to be Everywhere I Go, and what's the last one? Jesus Gave to Me. All right. So here we go. So a little more about Jam before we get into our sermon today. Um, we have 31 kids that were attending from grades kindergarten, and we even had a preschooler that attended um, all the way through sixth grade. So we had a lot of fun this year, and we'll be back in the fall for sure. And we have vacation Bible school this summer. So please stand as you are able as we sing our gospel acclamation.
The Holy Gospel according to the book of John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So our gospel lesson for today is a continuation of our scripture from last Sunday. Last week's lesson started in John chapter 14, verses 1, so the first 14 verses. And it had words such as, do not let your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you will be also. This is a popular text, John 14, verses 1 through 3, often read at funerals because, as we learned last week, it is a very comforting text because Jesus tells us not to be troubled, because Jesus tells us that there is a place for us in God's house. You see, Jesus is trying to comfort his disciples. They're struggling. They're scared. Amongst the disciples, there's chaos, there's confusion, there's concern. This scripture recounts, recounts events that took place before the resurrection, before Jesus died and was risen. Jesus knows that something bad is going to happen the next day, and maybe the disciples had a little bit of an inkling as well. The disciples definitely had concerns, though, when Jesus announces that his hour has come to pass on from this world and that he would love them to the very end. Then Jesus informs the disciples of his impending departure, followed by sending Judas off to betray him and predicting, Jesus, predicting Peter's denial. If the disciples didn't know that something was happening, if they had been calm up until this point, enjoying their meal, they definitely would not be after all of these events. You can tell the disciples are anxious because they're starting to ask questions. Thomas asks in this scripture, says, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Thomas and the others are concerned that they won't be able to find Jesus where he is going. How will they know the way? Reminds me of going to a new place that you have never been to before. This happens to me almost every week. Wondering if you will find the people or the place that you are looking for. Just this week, I had a pastor's meeting in the small town of Pennock. Does anybody know Pennock? Pennock? I'm not saying it correctly. I'm always saying things wrong, but that's okay. You'll forgive me. It was the first time for me to find Pennock and the local Lutheran church. And finding a new place can definitely produce some anxiety. I was wondering if I was going to find it. I always go a little bit too far and have to come back. If you don't know all of the people who are going to be at the event, you can also provide some anxiousness when you're wondering who's going to be there and will I know anyone when I attend. Jesus was the disciples' person. He was their confidant. He was their leader for the past three years, and they cannot fathom not being with him. They are worried that they will not know where to go or what to do. It's at this point that Jesus makes a promise to his disciples. Jesus promises that even though he won't be with them anymore, 
that something just as good will be sent in his place. Now, if I were the disciples, I think I would be thinking that I don't care that you are leaving me. I just want, I don't care what you are leaving me. I just want you to stay here with me forever. It's like when a teacher tells you that they're leaving the school district and you really like that teacher and they tell you that there will be another great teacher to come in their stead. But you don't know that future teacher, but you do know the current one. And you can't fathom learning about math or English or science without them. You have a relationship with them. You don't know this next teacher at all. If you think of it this way, the disciples maybe were not too excited about this thing that Jesus was talking about was coming in place of him. They didn't have a relationship with the thing that was coming. They knew and they loved Jesus and they wanted him to stay. But we know that Jesus could not stay. He had to go. He was fulfilling the plan that God had given him. And in his place, Jesus promises the disciples that he would not leave them orphaned. I love that word, that sentence in our scripture for today. That Jesus promises the disciples that he would not leave them orphaned. Jesus promises them an advocate to take his place. And this advocate is the Holy Spirit. The Greek word for Holy Spirit, as I've talked about before, is a word called paraclete. And Deacon Brenda this, this week told me that I should bring a pair of cleats. Paraclete, right? I thought that was kind of funny. And so the word paraclete, when you translate it, is a helper, it's an advocate, it's a counselor. So therefore, the Holy Spirit is something that will walk alongside you in your life to guide you and to show you the way if you invite the Holy Spirit to be with you. Jesus tells the disciples that the Holy Spirit will teach them everything and also remind them of all that Jesus had taught them. It's right there in Scripture, those words that says that Jesus tells the disciples that the Holy Spirit will teach them everything and also remind them of all that Jesus had taught them. Jesus was leaving, but he promised the Spirit to take his place. And the Holy Spirit is still among us today, guiding us, loving us, and walking alongside of us. You can't see it, but it's there, it's with us. I know I feel the Holy Spirit the most when I'm praying, I believe that when you are connected to God through prayer and scripture, it is then that God will lead you through the Holy Spirit. I also think the Holy Spirit is that voice in my head telling me to stop talking and to listen. Because I think it's when we listen rather than talk that we hear others, that we hear their needs and we can come to them with help and love. The Holy Spirit is that inkling in my gut that I just need to do something. Always something that is to help another person or that someone in need. And maybe, I always get this feeling that maybe I should check in on somebody. I think of somebody. Somebody comes to mind. I think that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the goosebumps I feel when a kindergartner answers a question that I have for them and tells you all about the Bible story that they learned that day. Now, I don't claim to corner the market on the Holy Spirit. Those are just my experiences. I encourage you today to ask someone close to you if you feel the Holy Spirit at work. What have you felt? How have they felt the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives? But most of all, I find it comforting knowing that God is with me each and every day. And I hope you find it comforting as well. I think that the disciples would have felt some comfort as they remembered this conversation after Jesus died on the cross. Jesus had to leave, but he did not leave his disciples orphaned. And we are not orphaned as well. We are accompanied by the Holy Spirit. We are accompanied by this church community. We are accompanied by our neighbor. We are not alone. We are not orphaned. God is most certainly with us, both now and forever. Amen.
We'll now sing our hymn of the day, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, number 631. Please stand as you are able. Let us confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing God, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone and to all who are sick or grieving on this day. Lord, we lift up to you now those who are on our prayer list. Dorothy, Sue, Clara, Ben, Wade and Jordan Jacobson and Baby, Deese, Dorothy, Teresa, Calman, Jack, Arlen, Violet, Reynold, Pearl, Cindy, Janelle, Chris, Don, Gail, Richard, Richard, Janet, and all those that we now name in our hearts, having the confidence that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God knows our needs. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. O oh God, today as we honor and thank the many types of mothers in our lives, we would also like to remember and pray for those for whom this day is not as joyful. We pray for those who have lost a child, for those who struggle with infertility, for those who have chosen not to be mothers, for those who may not have had healthy relationships with their mother, and for those who have lost their mom, especially those who are spending their first mother day, Mother's Day without her. Remind them, God, that your love is shown to them in many ways, through many people, and help us to be messengers of that love today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with those around you. We now have a time where we will take up our offering.
Please stand as we sing. Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of the bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together with the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this blessing. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is We Are Marching in the Light.
Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.